Glory. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise and we thank you. We thank and praise you for this day. We praise and thank you for the revelation knowledge that you are, praise God, confirming. Praise God through this ministry. The revelation knowledge, praise God, that you are giving. Praise God strategically, praise God, to those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that you're letting us know that it is time to get close to you, more closer than we've ever been in our life. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to know the truth, to walk in the truth and be the truth. Praise God, to yield our vessels to you, that you may use us in any way that you want to, to bring forth the, forth the good news of the gospel. I ask you, Father God, that everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice, praise God, that they would hear what thus saith the Lord, that they would pay attention to what you are saying, praise God, that it will melt like butter in their spirit in Jesus' name. We also thank you, Father God, for all of the messengers, the prophets, praise God, that have been prophesying the end time message in different ways, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To let the world know, to let God's people know, especially that he is on his way back. But before you come back, Father God, we know we have to spread the good news of the gospel to those who don't know, those who need deliverance, praise God. Those who are complacent, praise God. Those, praise God, who need an uplift and encouragement to do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You said the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Father God, we pray for more laborers, pure laborers, that only have your purpose in mind. That they are willing and ready to do whatever you say to do. We thank you for the full armor of God. We thank you, praise God, for every piece of the full armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. To know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. To know, praise God, that you have given us power over all the power of the enemy and by no means shall nothing harm or hurt us as long as we stay focused on you reading your word talking to you walking with you opening up our hearts to you and only you in the name of jesus father god we give you praise today for the last part of this lesson on familiar spirits to teach, to acknowledge, to share, praise God, the acts and the strategies and the deceits of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, as we go forth to the coming of the Antichrist, praise God, that it will bless, give revelation, knowledge, to whomever has an ear to hear, to be prepared to fight. To fight, praise God. To be prepared to know one's own self so that the enemy cannot use you against yourself or his people in the name of Jesus. We lift up every family, praise God, that are in crisis right now. Every family that is being tormented by the enemy. We lift them up that they would call on the name of Jesus so that they and their family can be delivered in Jesus' name. We give you praise, Father God, and we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we were talking, you know, when we um, praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank God for what he did before we got on on video, um, you know, the prayer that went forth, the continuing prayer, praise God. I just thank him for speaking to us, you know, um, <clears throat> and for 
you know, giving us this wonderful information to share with everybody who were here. Um, we had talked last week about, um, I think it was the carnal, um, the uh, gates that the enemy comes through, mm -hmm. praise God, which was the carnal gate and the speech gate. Now, praise God, moving on to recognize and reject and remove, praise God, recognize, reject, and remove, praise God. And as we were talking before, um, Stephanie, <clears throat> you know, what um, stuck out to you the most? What did you learn, praise God, um, from this? Um, and also what has been on your mind, praise God, to share? What really stuck out to me was uh, it said it requires spiritual power. Amen. In spirit and scriptural Amen. truth Amen. to resist Satan mm -hmm. and his insidious temptations. Amen. Amen. That jumped off the page. Amen. And then he went on to the other scriptures, especially the one in James that said, Submit to, submit to God and resist the devil. Mm -hmm. But that, it requires. Mm hmm. There's no getting around it. Amen. It Amen. requires spiritual power. Amen. And scriptural truth. Amen. You got to have the truth of the word of Almighty God. Amen. To resist Satan. That's right. And his insidious mm -hmm. temptation. Amen. The diabolical. That just that left off the page. And see, that's saying something. That's saying something to whoever's listening. Praise God. That you cannot do it in and of yourself. And the lesson yeah. that we had in and of yourself, you cannot do it. You know, you, you think you can, but you cannot. Um, in the lesson earlier today, we were talking about the the Ten Commandments and, and uh, the cross. You know, the blood of Jesus and the resurrection power that um, uh, was uh, given to him, praise God, when he resurrected the power. He had power over all. And God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And says that by no means shall nothing harm or hurt us. So we can't go back to the Ten Commandments and, and, and do that ritual. But we can do it in Jesus. You cannot do anything without Jesus. You can prosper for a moment. But in the end, you're going to die. Straight up. You're going to die. Everybody, like right now, a lot of people are leaving here. Why? Because either their assignment is finished, they can't do it, or they won't do it. Praise God. So the can't do it, God feels and says, all right, you can't do it, you come on home, go on to heaven. The ones who's finished, the generals who have finished their course, they get to come home. The ones that won't do it, God has mercy on them and brings them on home before they go to hell. Glory to God. He has mercy on the weak. Mercy on the, I ain't going to do it. And he loves the ones that have finished their course. And if you are called by God, when you are called by God, you want to finish your course. Whatever it is he called you to do, you want to look to him to do it and finish it. Before you leave this side of the veil to go to the other side of the veil. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, you know, I'm saying this because all of these lessons that you, that especially Life in the Blood, the people that go to Life in the Blood have uh, been taught, are teaching them how to live a Christ-like life. How to depend on God, how to have a relationship with God. Yes, yes. Because they yes. are ready. For what's about to come. Because God has definitely prepared them for it. That's the truth. Because the, 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 the last the subject that we're on right now. We've been on for two years. This whole segment of the four segments of the new heaven and the new earth. And it starts off with the rapture. Then it goes into the coming of the Antichrist. Which we're going to do. And then it goes to the great tribulation. Then it goes to the day of the Lord. The millennial reign. Praise God. And then the new heaven and the new earth. People don't even know about that. They don't even, they touch on it, but they don't minister on it. And it needs to be ministered to. You need to know what happens in the millennial reign. People don't even know what that is. Some do. 
You need to know what the new heaven and the new earth is about. People say, I get a new body, but okay, I'm going to heaven, but okay. But you don't know the details about that and what requires, what it requires for you to get there. And everybody's paying attention to the things in the world, which is the distraction of the enemy to distract you from God, to distract you from where you're going. How you going to get there? What you going to do when you get there? Praise God. Because your personal relationship with God is going to let you know. Praise God. You notice that when people are on their way to the other side, they don't want to come back. They don't even want, they're ready to go. Then you have some that fight it. Praise God. That's because they don't know Jesus. And they just said right before they die, I accept him as my personal savior. Those are the ones that are just saved. Praise God. And then there's some, like some people I know, who at the end of their life were so shocked that their eyes got big because they realized that heaven is real and so is hell. And so, in their hearts, they accepted Jesus because they've seen that it's real all their life. They have been living their life for themselves or people live their life for their family. Praise God. You can't live your life but for nobody but Jesus, God will take care of your family. When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things will be added unto you. That's what he meant. I'll take care of the rest. You just take care of what I need for you to do or want for you to do or purpose for you to do. Praise God. And that don't say you don't love your family. I love my family. But sometimes you got to give them to God because there's nothing else you can do. Amen. Amen. And so we all come to a crossroad where God is saying, you're going to go my way or your way. Which way are you going to go? I'm going to still love you whichever way you choose. But if you go my way, you're going to see the victory. You go your way, you're going to see flesh. And you're not going to see the victory because you cannot do nothing without Jesus. Amen. Nothing. I'm so serious about that. Nothing. And in these days to come, people... I mean, they're getting ready to change the how the money is. They're getting ready. To, you look at the weather. We ain't never had June like this. We had June gloom, but you ain't never had, had gloom from May to June. And we still got gloom. Even today, it was misty raining. And rain. Yeah, and rain in some places. You've never, ever seen that. And I've been here a long time. I ain't been here as long as others, but I've been here a long time. God is trying to tell us something. You need to pay attention in your circumstances what he's saying to you. And if you don't pay attention, you get in your flesh, you're going to miss God. So, you know, I appeal to you to really start paying attention to what's going on. United States is crumbling. This next election is going to be a, a, a fallacy. It's just going to be, you know, I, I don't even know what it's going to be. But it's going to be a fallacy, I'll say that. It's going to be a circus. That's what it's going to be. Nothing is the same, people. And everybody listening to my voice, you know, because you're in our age bracket. And the ones that aren't, praise God, ask somebody who knows how it used to be. It is not like that anymore. And if you keep thinking it's going to get better, you're fooling yourself. Because God is trying to tell you, I'm on my way back. Now, what does that take? It takes you to get with me. You know how you say, I got to get with this person in order to get what I got to get. Well, you got to get with God in order to get the 411. The information that you need for your personal self. And for what he's purposed for you in this life. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm appealing to you because I'm looking at this stuff. I'm looking at what God told me 20 years ago. And it's manifesting. I'm looking at people speaking about what he told me 20 years ago. And it's manifesting. It's scary. Because when somebody tells you something, you say, okay, I, I got the knowledge of that. That's cool. I have the knowledge of it. You know? And so that's all you have is the knowledge. But you don't have the experience of it. See, God has given us in the Bible knowledge, praise God, and the pathway to take. Now, he is the word that you, you got last 
last 20 years when you was first saved or whatever the cliches that we do you know uh, uh, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world you better know what that means is he really greater in you <laughs> for real is he really greater in you I mean come on let's tell the truth now shame the devil no I mean certain certain words that you learned when you were infant now God is peeling off praise God levels of that word now you got to live this thing you can no longer just know it you best be living it because when you live it it manifests and so when I heard the word that God told me and you know prophesied to me and I gave to others in a sense now you know whoever used to be a life in the blood they probably saying oh wow gee you know, Stephanie, I remember you called me and she said, you know, look at this. She tells me, look at this, look at that. Everything that she's been taught, praise God, for the last five years, four years, whatever it is. It's now manifesting. Everything. Everything. Now, I've been preaching and teaching this word for 20 years. For real. To whoever would listen, praise God. Now it's manifesting. And I'm looking at it saying, Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. And then when you look at it and you see it, then you say, dang, this thing is real. And then you say, wow, mm, how is heaven? How is it really going to be on the other side? Don't nobody know but them that have been there and didn't come back. They can't tell you. <laughs> they really can't tell you once they're gone. You know, they have some people that, you know, have experienced heaven and they come back and tell you and they write a book about it. I've read a few books. Praise God. But God said, go back and tell them. He wants them to go back and tell you that heaven is real. Now you guys say, oh yeah, I know heaven is real. No, you don't. Because you ain't been there. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you don't know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when you get to thinking about it, praise God. You get to think about it, you say, dang, that's kind of scary. Now, I know, I'm, I know I'm talking to somebody, praise God. That's kind of, it is kind of scary. And I ain't going to be lying about it. Because I don't know nothing about it. I know a little bit about it, but I don't know a whole lot about it. And in the, what I do know is only a snap of the finger. That's why God said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you can't see. So when you have faith, praise God, in anything, praise God, especially God, that faith becomes a substance. And that substance of your faith is the evidence of what you cannot see. That word, a lot of people say, don't even know what they're saying. Glory to God. And even I just got a, 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 a deeper revelation of that word, of faith. Because we're trying to have faith. I remember I had a prophecy and they told me, uh, I had asked God to increase my faith and so the prophecy came. God said he heard you. He's going to increase your faith. I know what that meant. I see what it means now. Increasing your faith means you go through the experience of faith. I have faith, praise God, that you're going to pay my bills. I have faith that people are going to come here, praise God, and help the ministry. I have faith, praise God, that my children will be all right. It may not happen right then. Like my granddaughter called me and told me that, praise God, she told God she was going to listen to him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. God pays my bills every month by, what do you call it? Supernaturally. And I see it. You know, it's a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you cannot see. So he brings about a circumstance so that faith can become real to you to know that God is real. That I'm answering your prayer. That I am your provider. That I am your source. Nobody else is your source but me. I'm the one that created you before your mother's womb. I am the one, praise God, that brought you into this world for my purpose. Glory to God, not yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we need to understand that God is sovereign. He is sovereign ruler. We need to understand that ain't nothing we got belong to us. It all belongs to God. I don't care if the president of the United States, the queen of, of England, I don't care if Oogum Boogum 
got something. Whoever got it, they got it from God. Because he made everything you see, everything you feel, everything you touch, praise God. He made it all. He created it all. So if you want to, you know, like people say the creator, call it what it is. God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Call it what it is. Find out what it is. If you don't know what it is, find out, really find out what it is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. God will open the door and pour you out a blessing that you can't even contain. Oh, glory to God. Because the word is real. It's real. It is a substance. It becomes a substance when you have faith in the word. Glory to God. And this is what God is doing with everybody hallelujah this is what he's doing with everybody have faith in him not in yourself glory to God thank you Jesus mm. hallelujah I just praise and thank you father God for your word I hear you glory to God I hear you in the name of Jesus I hear you and I know that God is going to lead those that have an ear to hear through this troubled world to their purpose and you are going to do the purpose of God if you yield to him if you really want God otherwise I'm going to tell you something he will take you out of here I hope you hear that he will take you out of here look around and see how many people are going people go to sleep and don't wake up he will take you out of here he'd rather take you out of here than you go to hell Well, hear the word. That means mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Mercy. That's right. It is mercy and grace. People be talking about grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Do you know what grace and mercy is? Hallelujah. You need to look into what grace and mercy he has on us. He really does. Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God. So I just thank God. I didn't mean to preach, but praise the Lord. That was the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, I know it was. I know it was the Holy Ghost. That was God flowing. You oh, feel it. oh, hallelujah. I said, wow, you teaching today, Lord. <laughs> he is teaching. That's why, you, you know, I, I, leaders need to understand that you need to allow God to flow through you to, to speak to the people. Because there's people out there that will hear in the spirit. They will hear. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't have no microphone. And he spoke to thousands and they heard him. But he spoke to their hearts. And their hearts heard what he was saying. Praise God. And the ones that didn't hear what he was saying. That just came for the fishes and the loaves. That's all they got. They didn't get the revelation. So if you're coming for the fishes and the loaves. That's all you're going to get is the fishes and the loaves. Praise God. That's you're great. not going to get the revelation of God. You're not going to get the revelation of God. In your spirit. When he speaks to you. So everybody out there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who tuned in. I thank God for you. I thank God that you get what God is saying, that you prepare yourself for what is about to come on this land. And people say, oh, it's, it's already here. No, it ain't already here. It's coming and it's coming fast. And before you know it, it's really here. Because it ain't, it ain't here all the way. Praise God. It's really not. Praise God. We still have them, the little remnants of, you know, the old. But this new technology that's coming in. It's going to shock a lot of people. And a lot of people, praise God, you're going to have to listen to God to what to do. Not to the government, not to your mama, not to nobody, but God. And just like my granddaughter. My granddaughter, praise God, is ministering to her mother and her father. So who you don't know who he going to choose. You better be listening. Better be listening. Praise God. So I just ask God to touch each and every person that's out here listening to this word, the Holy Ghost is saying in the name of Jesus, touch him, Lord. Touch him, Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch him way down deep on the inside. Yes, Glory to God. Open their eyes, their spiritual eyes to see the deceits of the devil. Open their spiritual eyes to receive the information that you have for them so that they can be prepared for the onslaughts of the enemy.
that they can be prepared, praise God, to hear your voice in the voice of a stranger they will not follow in the name of Jesus. I ask you to bless each person, praise God, with your Holy Ghost and power. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every weapon that has been formed against them shall not prosper. Every tongue that is risen up against them shall be condemned in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father God, and give you praise. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right now. Recognize, reject, and remove. <laughs> Hagee's. The Three Heavens. He says, I recall Derek Prince sharing a sobering truth about demonic activity. I wish, I, were, I wish it were true that Christians were immune to demonic invasion. He says, I wish it were true that Christians were immune to demonic invasion. Unfortunately, our corruptible, our corruptible has not yet put on the incorruptible. That's right. Our corruptible has not yet put on the incorruptible and our moral mortal has not yet put on immortality. Hasn't happened yet. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15 43, until that happens our minds and our bodies will still be vulnerable to the enemy. Amen. A demon can go anywhere that sin can go. That was good. Yes. That was so good. A demon can go anywhere that sin can go. Remember this truth. Where there is no sin, there is no offense. Where there is no offense, there is no guilt. Where there is no guilt, there is no shame. Oh, hallelujah. Demons cannot be expelled with pious phrases and frivolous formulas. They must be defeated on a spiritual field of battle. i say that again. They must be defeated on a spiritual field of battle. You don't negotiate with demons. You cast them out. You don't negotiate with demons. You cast them out. Jesus proclaimed in Matthew 12, 28. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. It requires spiritual power and spiritual truth, scriptural truth, to resist Satan and his insidious temptations, as Stephanie had said earlier. It requires spiritual power. You have to have the power of the Holy Ghost. And you have to have the scriptures, praise God, to back it up. Glory to God. Because you can say, praise God, again, praise God, uh, 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 any scripture. And if you're just saying it, it's like a potion, praise God. You have to have the Holy Ghost to back it up. Hallelujah. Now remember that. You can't just say something. Like you can go come, come up to the devil and, and, and say, oh, you know, how great is he that's in me, he that's in the world. The, the devil look at you like, really? And growl all over you, praise God, eat your butt up. But if the Holy Ghost is saying it, and the Holy Spirit is behind it, praise God, he got to step back in the name of Jesus. So you have to fill yourself with the Word of God. That's why it says, praise God, it requires spiritual power, Holy Ghost power, and scriptural truth to resist Satan and his insidious temptation. That's why a lot of people um, are, you know, they're not successful. In fighting the enemy. And a lot of people who mean well, you know, especially in deliverance ministry, they mean well. You know, but they come into that to that arena with the devil, praise God. And and they saying things and they ain't backing it up because you gotta back it up with you believe in what that scripture say. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You gotta believe what that scripture say. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, you gotta believe it. And again, here we go with faith. It has to become a substance. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The Spirit has to be, be behind it. It becomes a substance, praise God. Amen. And it becomes powerful. Amen. Glory to God. And you get that power by reading the Word and prayer. So it requires spiritual power and scriptural truth to resist Satan and his insidious temptations. Okay? And when it says resist Satan and his insidious temptation, you, you, you are, you're a drug addict. You're alcoholic. You 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 are, 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 are a sex demon. You're just in sex. Praise God. You're a gossiper and a liar and a thief. You you, you know you steal. Just impulsive stealing. You know you don't even need it, but you steal it. Praise God. Those are insidious temptations. 
praise God. You have to have the power of God. You have to have the scriptures of God to be able to fight that off. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What does it say? Healing. Praise God. Step back, demon, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Or are you just saying that? In the name of Jesus. People be saying, in the name of Jesus. Do you believe in the name of Jesus? The blood of Jesus. Do you believe in the blood of Jesus? Yes, I believe in it. Do you really? Okay. Come up against a demon and see how much you believe it. You know, like some people be burning rubber. See a demon, they burn rubber getting away. Praise God. But if you're going to step, you got to step with Jesus. And when you step with Jesus, that word coming out of your mouth, it just flows out. The demon be just so toe up, the demon will run from you. I remember I was telling them one time there was um, a lady who came to service here one day. And she brought somebody else. The word was so powerful. That woman could not sit in her seat. Them demons that was in her lifted her up and she ran and left the lady she came here with. She left, left out of here. I'll never forget that. I was like, wow, that's deep, Lord. The word, the word, but the substance, the power behind that word was itching them demons. They couldn't take it. Had another lady that came, was getting the lesson. She said, I can't stay here. I got, I got, I got, I got to go. I said, okay, well, you ain't, I ain't going to drive you. You're going to have to walk. Because if you don't want to get delivered, well, you're going to have to walk because I'm not going to take you. <laughs> she, she got mad, but she walked on out of here. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because if you don't want to be delivered, I don't want to deliver you. Or God doesn't want to deliver you. And then, you know, you go back to doing what you've been doing, and then it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. He arrived in Nazareth. He read from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So Jesus came to set the captive free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. In order for you to be set free, you've got to yield and say you want to be free. Just like in deliverance, praise God. The Lord told me, ask him first. Do you want to really be delivered? Do you really want to be delivered? And what God does, praise God, is so miraculous. What he does is he shuts the demon's mouth and lets the person speak. And if the person really wants to be delivered, they'll say, I really want to be delivered. Then God said, God said, tell them to go. I'm standing right here. Tell them to go. Tell them to go. You leave. In the name of Jesus. And she really meant it. And that thing left her. Praise God. Glory to God. But if you don't really want to be delivered, then God is going to let it be the same. Go ahead. Hallelujah. So the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to claim liberty to the captives and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So Jesus Christ, who knew all things, testified by his words and actions that Satan is only defeated by the power of the Holy Ghost. I learned that a long time ago. The Lord showed me that. He said, you ain't doing the delivering I am. you just a yielded vessel, praise God. And God thanks you for being a yielded vessel. He thanks you for being obedient, praise God, when he says to do something. He really loves that. He loves that. Because then he knows he can trust you, he can use you, praise God, and, and get things done. So the believer has been given the authority to cast out demons, Mark 16, verse 17. So when Jesus sent out the 70 believers to minister, they returned to him and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So they are all tripping, you know. Oh, God, the demons, they are subject to your name. So when Paul was confronted with a demonized woman at Philippi, he spoke in the power of Jesus' name. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. That was the witch, praise God. I mean, that was the necromancer, mm -hmm. praise God. But he said it in the power of the Holy Ghost. 
The Bible clearly states, submit to God. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Praise God. James chapter 4 verse 7. Once we have recognized the evil intruder, we must reject his influence and remove ourselves from his presence. And you can do that. You have the power to do that. What did the word say? I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all of the power of the enemy. So if he's given you that power, you can use it. Praise God. If for some reason you feel inadequate to do so, then go to your designated spiritual authority, pastor or priest, who has sound knowledge of the biblical doctrine of demons and deliverance, and ask for help. Praise God. If you can't do it, ask for help. Either way, believers have both the authorization and the ability to be victorious over the powers and principalities of the devil. Praise God. So, that's recognize, reject, and remove. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the journey to freedom. Allow me to guide you on the same journey to freedom that Derek Prince first led my congregation some 40 years ago. First, Surrender your life to Jesus Christ and acknowledge his lordship first. You cannot expect deliverance without yielding to Christ and his word. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Second, you must humble yourself and crucify the sin of pride. Pride comes in so many layers praise God so many different ways praise God pride will make you choose your ego over your liberty amen no I don't want nobody to see me like this you know oh I don't want nobody I don't want nobody to see me like this oh I'm you know you know uh, it, that's pride pride comes in many different ways praise God you know um and and you don't want that you you don't mind if they see you any kind of way as long as you get your deliverance praise God whatever that is amen, amen. so God resists the proud he Resist the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So we have to humble ourselves. We can't be so prideful. And what happens with a lot of leaders is that they get prideful because people want to make them God. You know, that's why the angels always say, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't worship me. I am just an angel. I'm just a vessel. I'm just an angel. I come, I'm just a messenger. That's what they be saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if leaders do that, then God can use them more readily. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God is going to do that in these last days. Because God is looking for people who are pure at heart for him. And all they want is for him to get the glory. They don't want no glory. Praise God. And then there are people who say that but don't mean that. So you have to have the discernment of God to see if what's coming out their mouth is from Baal or flesh or really from God. So you ask God for deep discernment. Praise God. So according to scripture, the following promises are guaranteed to believers who humble themselves. Redemption, Philippians 2, verse 5 through 8. Riches and honor, Proverbs 22, 4. Sweet fellowship. Isaiah 57 5 peace Matthew 11 29 greatness Matthew 23 11 exaltation Luke 14 11 and unity Ephesians 4 1 through 3 a victorious Christian life Romans 12 verse 9 through 21 so that's second you've already did first surrender your life Second, you must humble yourself and crucify the sin of pride. Third, you must make a full and honest confession of the sins that have allowed Satan and his demonic forces into your life. This is no time to hide behind the veil of secrets. Praise God. God knows. So just let it all hang out. Tell him everything. Praise God. He is aware of every sin you have committed and are presently committing. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Luke chapter, 11, chapter 8 verse 17. The only sins God will not remember are those that have been confessed and covered by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. The only sins God will not remember are those that have been confessed and covered by the blood of Jesus. Remember that. 
He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. I will be merciful to those unrighteous and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will, rem I will remember no more. Hebrews chapter 8 12. Now fourth, we must repent of our sin by taking responsibility for our actions and turning away from those things. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Just like King David, we need to cry out to God and admit that we have sinned against him and him alone. Psalms 51 4. We must learn to despise sin as much as our father does. We must learn to despise sin as much as our father does. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 through 18. The fifth step on the journey to deliverance is forgiving those who have offended you or brought you harm. Before you receive forgiveness from God, you must first be willing to extend forgiveness to others. Mm -hmm. The Lord's Prayer confirms this truth. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Scripture further explains why this is so important. If you forgive men and their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, in their, their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So it's really, really important that you forgive. Now, it may not be easy to forgive somebody that done you super wrong, you know, but I ask the Lord all the time to help me to forgive. Amen. And then I ask him if there's any residue, Father God, I ask for that residue to be removed. And I confess my sin or my unforgiveness to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he will help you. Because it's hard sometimes to forgive people when, you know, you trusted them and they betray you. It's very hard, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's possible with Jesus. Everything, as we talked about in the beginning of this lesson, you can't do anything without God. You can't do anything without Jesus. Praise God. So that's the fourth. So here we go. If you forgive. Okay. What does it say? Um, the Father will give you trespasses. Okay. Harbored hatred toward others will hinder. Harbored hatred and bitterness, I'll say will hinder the ultimately and, and ultimately prevent your deliverance. So that's the reason why you might not be able to get delivered. You know, because you still are harboring bitterness and hatred for whomever did whatever. And a lot of people have that bitterness is hiding in them. It's been hiding from childhood. And God will, you know, bring it up little by little so you can cast it out and give it to him. And that's what you do. You give it to him. Yes. Hallelujah. So complete forgiveness is imperative in order for you to experience sweet communion with Jesus Christ. Complete forgiveness is imperative in order for you to experience sweet communion with Jesus Christ. Forgiveness sometimes seems impossible because we consider the offense too grievous. It is in these times that we must ask God to forgive us the willingness, get the willingness to forgive. Because, you know, I, like I talked to a couple of friends of mine, um, it's so hard to forgive um, your parents who didn't give you love. A lot of unforgiveness comes from childhood, how you were raised, what happened in your childhood, you know, um, and not realizing that what happened to you happened to your parents, like the movie um, the, the Shack, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, when they explained it, when the angel explained to the guy, that um, and showed him the reason why your father was so mean and bitter and beat you all the time when his father did the same thing to him. So a lot of times in counsel, the Lord will show me the beginning, where it came from. And when you find out where it came from, you have understanding. You know, when you have understanding about why a person did you a certain way, praise God, um, and how, you know, they betrayed you and and you know uh, uh, treated you bad your parents your friends you know um, your husband or your wife you know you got to go back and ask God to give you understanding because you know that God loves them too because he does so give me understanding Lord as to why they're like that why are they so heartless mean why are they liars and cheaters you know and then you when you go back you find out that they're liars and cheaters and hatred and 
all of that, you go back and find out why it comes from, most of the time it comes from their childhood. Why are they um, uh, pedophiles? You know, why are they, um, you know, lustful? You know, um, then you find out in their childhood, it was introduced to them. So that spirit was introduced to them at an early age. They don't know the difference. You know, if you raise up a child to be a thief and a liar, that's what that child will be. They don't know no difference. They may hear something different, but they've been raised. That stuff is in them. So it takes, you know, a lot of ministry um, and the word and their willingness when you see the morality of them is, is seared. You know, um, you begin to, God will begin to know where to, to, to how can I say, uh, to point, to, to points in their heart where to get to them, to unlock some of those doors that they've locked, praise God, and they can be delivered, where they can, you know, um, speak it out, you know, and God can help them. So, it, it you know, deliverance is, is hard sometimes, especially if your heart is hardened. But God has a way of using people to get to the nucleus of it and pull it out, pull that root of bitterness out, that root of unforgiveness out. But it takes a lot of work and it's a lot of pain because a lot of times they don't want to relive that pain again. And I can understand that. And when you understand that, then you understand why they're the way they are. That don't mean that you, you know, partake of that anymore. That just means that, you know, you, you step back from it. If you're the person that's been, you know, betrayed, you step back from it and you pray. You pray for them. You know, and God will do the rest. Amen. Amen. Oh, but you don't you step Jesus. back into a harm's way. You don't do that. Because God is letting you know this person's heart is hardened towards you. Or they're jealous towards you. Or they don't mean you no good. You step back from it. But you pray for them because it comes from somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. And God knows where it comes from. And if he doesn't divulge it to you, then you can pray that he will divulge it to someone to divulge it to them. Amen. Praise God. For Lord, this is good. So one of the best examples of this kind of willful action was uh, demonstrated by a remarkable woman I had the high honor to meet at an author's banquet. So again, forgiveness sometimes seems impossible because we consider the offense too grievous. It is in these times that we must ask God to give us the willingness to forgive. So he says one of the best examples of this kind of willful action was demonstrated by a remarkable woman I had the high honor to meet at an author's banquet. Corey Ten Boom, <laughs> the author of the international bestseller, The Hiding Place, strived, oh, survived the hellish and incomprehensible horrors of the Holocaust, enduring brutality and heartbreaking loss on a scale that overwhelms the mind. One of the guards in the Ravensbrück concentration camp personally committed vicious inhuman acts against her and her fellow prisoners as well as causing the death of her only sister Betsy. After Corey spoke on forgiveness at one of her many engagements after the war ended a man from the audience approached her. She immediately recognized him as her officer from Ravensbrück even though he did not remember her. He came up to Corey and told her that he had been a guard at, at a camp, but since then he had become a Christian. Knowing that God had forgiven him, he was still desperate to receive forgiveness from those who had been in his concentration camp. There was, there he was, the one whom she had felt such hatred toward for all these years asking for forgiveness. Corey stood there speechless and practically paralyzed for a brief moment, which seemed like hours. Memories and thoughts ran crazily through her mind as she wondered how she could ever forgive someone like this, someone who had played a part in her sister's death. But she also thought of how many times God had forgiven her of her sins. And that's something you need to look at. How many times did he forgive you of your sins? Amen. Regardless of whether they're little or huge. So in that moment, her obedience to the Holy Spirit, notice, her obedience to the Holy Spirit overtook her freshly desire to rebel. I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgiven, forgiven, forgives has a prior condition that we forgive those who have injured us. 
help I pray silently help me I can lift my hand I can do that much you supply the feeling I forgive you brother I cried with all my heart for a long time the former guard and prisoner the former oppressor and the oppressed grasped each other's hand she said that in this moment she felt God's love move intensely than ever before I cannot imagine a more beautiful display of forgiveness between two people we must conquer and command our will before forgiveness can become a part of our spiritual deliverance and emotional healing the next crucial step is to break ties with all forms of occultic activities false religions and idols there are no exceptions not nor shall you bring an abomination into our, your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. This is a very good display of forgiveness, because most people could not and would not forgive this man, because I can just imagine the things that he did to the people. So the seventh and final step is to prepare your heart to praise God and your mind and spirit to be released from the bondage of hell itself. The seventh step and final step is to prepare your heart, mind, and spirit to be released from the bondage of hell itself. You have lived under the curse of Satan long enough. It's time to step into the light of God's blessing and be forever free. A great exchange occurred at the time of Christ's death on the cross. Paul described that miraculous freedom in this way. Christ, praise God, I love this, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Here we go with faith again. A substance. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14. I read that earlier today. Praise God. Blessed. We are very blessed. To even know Christ. So this is the act of deliverance. That was praise God. What was it? It was praise Jesus. Which is so good. The journey to freedom. Yes, yes, yes. The journey to freedom. Praise God. Recognize and reject. Then the journey to freedom. Now we have the act of deliverance. We have come for a circle. And are now ready to submit to God. And his word. And demand that the devil flee from us. James 4 verse 7. We must speak the name of Jesus for demons tremble at the mere mention of it. James chapter 2 verse 19. Once you have filled each step, identify the enemy by name. Wherever it is or whatever it is, reject it from your life and then pray the prayer of deliverance. And the demon spirit that has held you hostage has no choice but to leave. Glory to God. I offer this simple yet powerful prayer as an example you can use to complete your journey to freedom Satan in the name of Jesus and by the power of his shed blood and by the authority I have through the word of God I renounce you yes. and your kingdom I reject your demon spirits uh, and call them by name of this that and the other praise God hallelujah of sickness and disease praise God Hallelujah, glory to God, a perversion, praise God, hallelujah, and their influence over my life. So again, I renounce you and your kingdom, I reject your demon spirits of, praise God, and call them by name and their influence over my life. No longer will I be dominated by any stronghold that has held me captive. I receive my deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ, I am free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. glory yes. to God, I am free. Hallelujah of unforgiveness. Yes. Glory to God. I am free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God of demonic activity in my Thank life. Jesus. So Derek, Derek uh, declared the following promise over my congregation after a deliverance service. And I now declare it over your life. Every prayer of a Christian prayed in faith according to God's word based on his promises prayed in the name of Jesus Christ inspired by the Holy Spirit whether for temporal or spiritual blessing, will be fully answered. Praise God. So protecting your freedom is the next one. Act of deliverance, protecting your freedom. 
after you have experienced God's deliverance, it is imperative that you immerse yourself in his word. Attend a Bible-centered church or ministry that preaches the uncompromised, that's the word right there, the uncompromised gospel of Christ and stay in fellowship with like-minded believers. Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Philippians chapter 1 verse 5 through 6. Jesus warned us that we must guard our minds, hearts, and spirits after we receive deliverance. We must guard our minds, hearts, and spirits after we receive deliverance. Stay separated from Satan and his kingdom of darkness. Praise God. If we fail to do both, then remember we are susceptible to an attack seven times greater than before. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It will be worse. Praise God. You are in control of your destiny. Do not give Satan a foothold in your life that will steal your peace, your joy, and your hope. God promises to never leave or forsake us. He has presented his word, praise God, for our instructions. His son for our redemption and the Holy Spirit for our comfort and guidance. God also created a heavenly host to protect and defend us. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Praise God. Glory to God. Psalms 91 verse 11. Let us now take a journey into the invisible world of angels and discover their power to protect and defend you and those you love. There are angels standing beside you right Amen. now. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. is Lord. Hallelujah. If you have listened to this lesson and lessons before Thank These you, are Jesus. life living mm, you, lessons. Lord. And God wants you to actually experience them. Praise God. So you've got to abide in God in order to do it. Take this information, you know, and use it. Amen. Amen. Use it. Praise God. Don't just let it sit on the table. Praise God. Don't just let it, you know, just sit in and, and get, you know, uh, cobwebs on it, but begin to exercise in your life these life lessons on the new creature, on, you know, the spirit of divination, praise God, the, 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 the divil deliverance ministry and familiar spirits, Thank praise you, God. Jesus. I just give God, really... Thank him for um, this lesson today. The Thank end of this Lord. lesson on yes, familiar spirits. Perfect. I hope that it has, you know, um, blessed you. I hope that it melted like butter in your spirit. Yes. I yes, hope that Lord. you take this and run with it. Praise God that you begin to live the word. Praise God and begin to have a deeper understanding, a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just give you praise, and I, I, I always say at the end, you know, if these lessons have blessed you, bless this ministry, praise God, with whatever, you know, your finances or whatever help you can give, praise God, to this ministry, because we need it, praise God. And um, so, you know, um, there's this Cash App, we have Cash App, praise God, I don't know how long Cash App's going to be, as we talked about how this money thing is going to change, but... While it while it's here, you can do Cash App or you can call me if you need to speak to me at 626-583-9071. Praise God, and I'll be happy to talk to you. If you want to take lessons, lessons are available, private lessons for now. I don't know how long that's going to last. But private lessons, mm -hmm. God, what he does is per person, he gives you like a... a um, a synopsis or he gives you personal uh, uh, what do you call it I forget what you call it but anyway you'll have a personal um, lessons you'll have personal bible lessons studies. yeah it'll be bible studies it's a personal bible study praise God curriculum that's what it is praise God thank you Lord for giving it back to me but yeah this personal curriculum that he gives specifically for you to grow you up but I don't know how long God is going to do that because as the things get worse you know, more people are going to want to come to the light. And, uh, you know, the Lord is going to use me to train other teachers to teach, praise God, and so on and so forth for Life in the Blood ministry. So, you know, God bless you. God keep you. Call me if you like. You know, if you care to 
give to the ministry would be greatly appreciated and I know that God will definitely bless you a hundredfold for doing it so I give you pray I give you praise Lord and I thank God for you I love you so much in Jesus name until next week on the Antichrist the coming of the Antichrist all right God bless God keep and talk to you next week. Bye. Hallelujah. That was